Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at how you can create neat little visuals using an SVG file format. Now the benefit of this is that you can embed it straight into the new card visual and also the table visual and they are completely configurable and completely dynamic. So if we look here I'm going to change this criticality and we can see as we change it not only does this value here change but the actual trend changes and so does this embedded text here that shows the difference between the start and the end point of these periods here. Plus it's got this little conditional formatting arrow that points up or down and is red or green depending on the value here. So I'll be talking you through how you can create one of these and configure it to be exactly what you need. Okay, so before we get started, I just really want to show you what an SVG file format is. So this is an editor here, and I'm just going to start dropping some shapes onto here. And I'm going to go and I'm going to fill that with a color. So let's just use this color here. And I'm going to create one of these here. And I'm going to just hold down shift and make it a circle. And I'm going to add in some text. And let's just make this larger. And I'm going to use this pencil here to create what looks like a little bit of a, a line graph. So I'm then going to go and I'm going to go and save this image. I'm going to open it up here. Okay, so an SVG file format is defined by basically coordinates that explain the start and end points of lines to define each of the different objects. So if we look at this one here, we've got a rectangle and we can see that it's got attributes here. It's got a width, a height, it's got a, a location, an X and Y location in the screen. It's got a stroke color, it's got a fill color. So if I just go back to my file here, we can see that defines what that rectangle is and where it sits within this overall picture here. Now, each one of these has got its own, its own set of attributes. So here's the ellipsis here, which is this circle here, here. And then we've got the text, which is this section here. We can see here's the, the, the 12 there, which is the actual text, but it's got a font family, it's got a size, it's got a stroke width, etc., etc. So we can see that they're all defined using these objects here that are embedded within the actual file itself. Now, when it comes to something that's a bit more complicated like this here, then we can see that the output is far more complicated. And we can see it's defined by this path here. Now the path is defined by primarily coordinates, okay, pairs of x and y coordinates that say where it starts and where it ends, okay, and all of these numbers here come together to define this exact line here and its location within the overall SVG file. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use that SVG file and we're going to embed elements of our data model to create line charts based on the values that are in our measures. So that's basically what an SVG file format is. Now the benefit of this is that you can actually embed these SVG file formats into some of the Power BI visuals. And in particular, we're going to be looking at the new card visual and we're going to be looking at the table visual just really to, to give an, another option. Okay, so in terms of getting started with SVGs, there's two approaches I'd take. First of all, I learn how to actually learn what an SVG is and some of the attributes and I'm going to leave some resources below that's going to explain that some YouTube videos and some some other resources. The second element is learning how to create or embed these into measures within Power BI and again there's some great resources out there that I'm going to leave a link below to. Now once you've watched those the next thing is to get a catalogue of SVGs. Now you can start from scratch however there's a site here by Kerry Colosco, I think that's how you say it, and she has been extremely generous and created these templates here, this SVG templates. Now what it is, is basically you, you look through for something that is pretty close to what you need. And if I go and click on, for example, this one here, she's actually created the measures for you. Okay, so we're starting, we don't need to start from scratch, we're starting with a measure and then we can use that and modify it to meet our needs. Okay, so I would highly recommend you use these accelerator templates to allow you to do that. So I'm going to go and find one and we're going to go and paste that into a Power BI desktop file. Okay, so I really like the look at this one here. It kind of matches what I want. I want to have this, um, these little data points here. I want this line chart. I really don't want this um, 
this gradient here, but I'm going to go and copy this. Okay, so I'm in Power BI and I'm going to go and I'm going to create myself a new measure. So there's a few other ones I've been practicing with before, but I'm going to create a new one. Okay, so this is a new card visual here. I've got another couple of videos I'll be linked below that explain how to set up this visual and some of the, the options I've got. But this is really going to focus on using this SVG capability to create that spark line. So I've got it here and I'm just going to paste that in. And we can see that we've got our new visual here. So I'm going to call this one here. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go through and check on each one of these and replace those references to columns and measures with our own data model. So what I'm going to do is I've got a really straightforward data model here. I've got a date and I've also got a measure that I've created here called Batlog Hours. So here's that Batlog Hours there. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to replace each of these dates with the date I'm going to use and each of these measures here with my Batlog Hours. Okay, so I have now replaced the measures and the columns, so the date columns and the measures, with those that I want from my data model. So we can see here, the date that I want to use is, is this one here. So it's in the date table and it's calendar year month number. Now it might seem a bit of an odd choice, and I'll come back to that in a second. And whenever we see the measure referenced, I've used backlog hours. Now I'm using this calendar year month number here and that's because I want to use a date table and the grain of the date table is daily. However, if I look at my data that I've got, the grain of the data here is for each month for each year. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to change the grain of the, the date, the x-axis to be month and year rather than using the date because it just makes it look a bit odd and doesn't, doesn't particularly work. It doesn't work well at all because basically it's got a day with some values and then it's got as an x-axis, it's got a load of days in between each month that's got no values at all, so it just spaces it out and makes it look odd. So if you do use that, we can see this is how it works. So we've got a date here. The I mean, tooltip works okay because it's a line graph, but um, we're not using a line graph. We're using an image. We're creating an image. So we've got to be really explicit. So we can see we've got those missing points in between with these, with these spikes where we do have a date. So it doesn't work particularly well there. So what we need to do is find another option. And that is going to be to use the month and the year as the, the from the date table as the x-axis. Now, let's go and look at that. Okay, so this is the x-axis here, calendar month year. Now, this is how you, this is, when you're creating a line graph, this is, would be what you would want to display. However, when it comes to sorting the data, you want to be sorted, obviously, in chronological order. You need to sort this field here by this field here, which is the calendar year month number. So that is up here. If I scroll down, we can see it's already been sorted by that calendar year month number. Now, the SVG file, when it sees, if we input this, it doesn't know to sort by this number here. This is just a Power BI front-end application feature. So what we essentially need to do is use this calendar year month number as the x-axis for the SVG to render the actual visual for each of the backlog figures. And that means we're going to get it sorted in a chronological order and we're also going to get the proper grain for a backlog figure at the end of each month rather than it being daily, the, the date calendar being daily and having these, these spaces in between. So this was something that's particular to me. However, it's worth just covering and taking a few minutes to look at it because it might be something you come across when you start to use these yourself. Okay, so I'm back in Power BI and I've just updated it again with the year month number. Okay, so the calendar year month number. Okay, so to actually add in the SVG spark line, what we need to do is the following steps. And it's really straightforward and simple. So we we'll click on a card, go into the card section here. And then if we just make sure the card that we need is um, is selected now we've only got one in here which is about look hours latest so it's fine and then if we scroll down to the image section now there's two options here there's an actual image or there's an image url so the image url basically means that you are passing or you can pass in a url that links to an image or you can actually pass in a measure which has got an svg which has got all the code embedded in the measure which we have that creates the image and that's what we're gonna that's the option we're gonna use just now. So we're gonna go and click on this FX button here. 
and that's going to allow us to go and select a measure. We can see it's default to field value, and we're just going to go and select the measure from here. Now I've got a load of measures that I've been working with here, and this is the one we're going to use. And we can see here that it is there. So we can see that it is nicely formatted and looking great. So the next thing I want to do is, we'll just highlight first of all that I've actually created a tooltip here because I think it's quite useful to be able to see an overlay of the information just so that you can see that the trend that you're seeing on the actual um, visual is actually backed up by a trend that you've got in the, the tooltip there. So that's quite, that could be quite handy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the colour here and I want to change the, the width of the line. So I'm going to get rid of the, this background colour here and I'm going to change it to a grey colour because I want it to be understated and, and I don't want it to be muted to, to be this, this colour here because it's not really in keeping with the rest of the card here. So let's go in and we'll make those changes. Now, the way it's been set up is that it's really good. Each of these variables here is available to change the line colour, the point colour, and the comments are, are, are really good to explain what it actually does. So let's go and we'll change this first of all. And it does state that you use a 23, the percentage 20, 23 instead of just a hashtag for Firefox keep, um, compatibility. So at the end here, we're just going to put in 666666. And then in here, we're going to use the same color as well. I want it to be the same for both. Okay, so we can see the colour's been changed and we've no longer that, got that little white dot in the middle there. That's great. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the SVG image is, is constructed here and it's been split out by the gradient, the lines and the last data point. So the gradient, we want that fill op op opacity to be zero. And I also want the size of the actual final point to be a little bit smaller. Okay, so we're going to look at the radius here as being three, four, or sorry, four. So I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. I think this is the one you update here, which is for radius. Now, again, you can look online and find out what each of these CX, CY are. I mean, basically, that's the start of the, that's the X and Y position that you want to start from. That's the radius, etc., etc. So let's just leave that as well. We'll, we'll update that one out. And for the line, I want to make the stroke width slightly smaller. I'm going to make it two. Okay, so let's see that. So I hope you can see how really easy this is to just update to your own specification once you start using that template. And I don't, I've, I've been and I've looked and understand each of these, but these can be really, really complicated really, really quickly. And um, Kerry has really simplified it so that we can get started really fast and we don't really need to understand everything. And that's um, and that's quite important because we want to be able to use the benefits of this, but we don't have, want to spend hours and days and weeks trying to understand every single nuance of SVGs, unless you really do, of course, which in which case you can. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit better, a little bit simpler for me. That's, that's exactly what I need. So next, what I want to do is, I always like to draw a box around the SVG shape because I think it helps to just understand what it is that you're actually working with. So to do that, I'm going to use ChatGPT to help out. Okay, so I'm in ChatGPT and I'm going to use, I've got the plus here. Now it's going to work fine if you use the 3.5, I'm sure as well. But I'm going to use 4 here because I just find it obviously it's it's better at reasoning and it seems to be better at writing code as well. I'm just going to use the default. I'm not going to use this code interpreter because it's not going to actually write code that we can then run. We've got to still copy and paste it into the measure. So I'm going to prime it with a prompt here, telling it that it's an expert in DAX and it has an in-depth understanding of SVG, SVG file formats and also integrating those into DAX. So the job is to help me create a DAX measure that will, that will display a spark line. So I'm just going to prime it with a little bit of information there to, to help it take on a persona. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the code. Okay, so I've pasted in the code and we can see it's actually come back with some recommendations. I'm actually going to leave those for just now because I don't really want to mess with it as I don't need to. It looks fine to me. It might be something that happens further along the line once we start working with this, but I'm just going to leave it for just now. However, what I wanted to do now is I want to add a box. Okay, so I'm going to ask it to create a box. I'm going to ask it to create a variable so that I can switch that box on and off because I don't really want to use it when I publish this visual, but I do want to use it just while I'm actually working with it so we can see what the, the boundaries are. 
Okay, so we've got some text here. I'm going to copy that. And we can see it's added in the show box, which equals true at the moment. And this can change to false if you don't want to see the box. So let's go back and we'll integrate that into our Power BI report. Okay, so it's put a box in here and it's kind of messed with this little endpoint here um, for some reason. In fact, it's actually flipped upside down. So let's go and see what's going on here. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to actually tell it that it's flipped the line chart upside down. Okay, so it's admitted here and it's saying that it did actually mess up. The y-axis does indeed. So it's, it's overcorrected essentially. So let's copy that code and add that back in again. Okay, so that looks a little bit better now. We can see that the trend on the tooltip is matching up the trend that's on the actual um, SVG file here, the card. Right, so the next thing I want to do is here I want to display the difference between the start and end date and an up-down arrow. Okay, now I've not got a clue how I would go about starting to do this and I'd probably need to research it quite a bit. So I'm just going to go and use ChartGPT to help us out. Okay, so I'd like to insert some text. The text should be placed to the right side of the line. It should show the difference between the BART log hours at the start of the period and the end of the period in the filter context. Please increase the width of the SVG to accommodate this text. There should be a two padding between the end of the line and the start of the text. The text should be centered in the Y plane of the SVG. Okay, so let's see what it does here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this text and I'm going to paste it in here. Okay, so we can see we've got minus 10. Now, if we look here, we can see it started at 12 and it ends at 2. And we know that it's 2 here, so that's minus 10. So that's now adding in that text, and it looks as if it's at a reasonable padding there. Um, we can see that it's also adjusted the, the, the width of the box here to 200 units by 50. Now, we can't really say it's 200 of anything because it all works in proportions. Okay, so it's basically it's a proportion. It's 50 high by 200 long now. It used to be... 50 high by 150 long. So what we can do there is we can go in though and change the allocated size here. So let's go and do that. So if we scroll down we can see there's a size here which is 200. So let's make it slightly bigger. So I'm going to make that 250. Right, okay, just so we can see it. So this is why I've added this box in here. So we can see now that is a SVG and we can see that value there. So it's not quite in the center, but we can deal with that in a second. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add that indicator to see if it's increased or decreased. Okay, so I've asked it, can you please suggest the, um, the pair of triangles, just some examples of up and down triangles that I might want to use to use it as these, um, these, indicators to see if it's increased or decreased. So I'm actually going to use pair number one. Okay, so I'm just going to add that in to give it some instructions on how to add in some additional indicators if it's increased or decreased. Okay, and I'm just going to tell it to use pair one from the list above. So let's see how it does with this. Okay, so here we can see that code there. So let's just go and accept that. Okay, so we've got a down indicator there. So let's go and check to see what's going to happen if we want to use a different one. Um, we've got an up indicator. Oh no, we've got a down indicator there as well. Now, something doesn't quite... Oh no, it looks okay. That's fine. Let's look at this. Okay, so it looks like it's actually working reasonably well. So, I just want to see... That's gone up. I want to see one that is actually increased. Ah, here we go. Here's an increased one. Okay, so that's fine. So that indicator seems to be working fine. I'm actually going to just shift it off a little bit off to the to the to the right hand side, and I'm going to make it the same color as the text for this text is going to be the same color as the line, and I'm going to make it conditional formatting. Okay, so if it's up, it's going to be red. If it's down, it's going to be green. So let's go and do that. Okay, so I've asked it to do quite a lot here. I've asked it to change the indicator colour to be green if it's reduced, decreased, and red if the value has increased. I've said set the colour as a, as a variable near the top of the code, because I want it to be at the top so it's, it's next to the other variables that we can actually set for the other colours. Also, can you move the indicator and the difference text two points to the right? 
and change the colour indicator text to be the same colour as the line and finally change the line width to be 1.5 okay now interestingly it looks like we've got this here which I don't really reckon recognize but let's paste it in and let's see how if it works so it doesn't look like it's a function okay so I'm gonna actually wait and see what the other message is okay so we can see we've got another message here so let's just use that other message and we'll ping that in to chat GPT and all I'm gonna do is paste that other message in and see what it thinks of that okay so it's telling us that it's what it's done here and I'm just going to ask it to go and integrate that straight into the code okay so we can see here that if I start using some of these you can see environmental is increased you can see production has decreased routine has decreased. Okay, so we've not quite got the conditional format right because a decrease would be um, green rather than red, but it's easy enough to fix. Let's just go in and we'll sort that out. And I'm also going to change this, the width of this here, the size of this circle here. Now let's see if I can just I've got the line. Uh, we've got this circle here, 53 stroke, stroke width. Let's just make that 2, maybe just 2, and we'll leave this for just now because I'm going to get it to actually update it. So let us go now and go back in here. Now, the reason I'm going to get chart GPT to update it is because. It um oh it didn't have quite finished there. Okay, so next I'm gonna go and explain what the problem is. The upper though is green, it should be red, the down other is red it should be green please fix this okay so that's better now so here it is we have got the value pointing down if it's negative and which is all good and then up if it's increases up okay so if it's if it's a positive increase it's, it's, it's gone up and it's actually red so that's all good now i want to change the size of this here so again i'm just going to do it through chart gpt so it knows exactly the changes we've made okay so i'm going to change the the circle size to two and i also want to put us a, a, a circle in the first data point as well okay so the data points are a little bit the the dots are a little bit subtler and we can see that we've got the the up and the down and the the value there so it's actually starting to come together it's not quite in the center so i'm going to just ask chart gpt to, to calculate that tooltip keeps coming up that to calculate that um that center location there okay so as then is it's saying basically there's no easy way to do this um but it's going to move it further further up basically or further further down so it's going to be from 25 to 28 just to, to take into account that this is actually the top of the text that's starting at 25 so let's see how this works once it's um it's it's generated the text okay so it's moved it down a bit and that looks a little bit better right i'm just going to go in now and i'm going to get rid of this box because we're almost done with this one now what i've also done is i've added in a a new table here and I'm going to go and add this measure into this table as well so let's go and get rid of the box first just so we can see what this looks like without the border around it so remember there's a show box and we're going to change that to false that was a variable that we put in 
Okay, so here it is, and the final thing I'm going to do here before we move on and just a quick look at this is I'm going to put the background back into this um, this card here. So I'm going to go to card, and we've got, if we look here, we've got this bat log hours latest, which is the, the, the measure that's been shown in this card here. That's that value there. And we've got that image URL, which is fine. However, we've got the fill here. I'm going to turn that back on again. And we've got this little grey background here that I um, created as part of the, the first video. And I think that just gives it a little bit of a, just frames it nicely. And we can see we've got the current value there. We've got the trend and we've got this value here that shows the difference. Now, we'd probably put, add a subtitle or some other information to explain exactly what that does. But it seems to be working quite well. Right, excellent. So let's just add it quickly into this table here just so we can see it. So we're in the table. We're going to go to the list of measures. And all we're going to do is pull that measure into there. Okay, now it's going to give us some gobbledygook here. Seems to deal with it fine here, but what we have to do with this measure is make sure that the data category here is an image URL. And we can see it's in here. Now, we would obviously wouldn't use that because that's far too small, but it was really just to highlight the fact that you can use it in a, a table as well. So let's remove this, and that is us. So this is how you would go in and actually import an SVG file as a measure and start to configure the SVG file and start to change the characteristics of it, the color, add some text, add additional, change the, the start and end points, whatever it is you really need to do with it, using chat GPT and not having to go and really understand in depth how an SVG works, which I think is great. Okay, so what's your thoughts on that? Using it, not really understanding, it's a little bit of a black box, you're not really understanding what's happening, you're just passing that responsibility across to the the AI chatbot but I think it's something that's probably going to be more and more apparent in the future and in particular there's lots and lots of new technology getting released every single day and we just don't have the time to learn everything so pick your battles choose the things you think can you can really leverage and um, SVG is further useful it's probably something that's got a, a little bit of a niche use within Power BI in my opinion so I'm quite happy just to let ChatGPT deal with that Okay, so thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.